Before I start, uh, I want to thank Tapapa first of all for allowing uh, me to play with them. Uh, it was a great, uh, great experience to have uh, sit down with some of the, the people there. They went through a, a recent kind of restructure and stuff and rejig around. So we approached this project a little bit um, uh, late in a sense, but not too late enough not to do great stuff. And I'm going to split this talk into three things. One, what uh, the model that we approached to come up with the ideas, and then the ideas themselves in kind of what we did and what we got out of it. And then the third bit, what we really learned the deep stuff, okay? If any points, uh, you got any questions, I don't mind you jumping in, but I know Tom likes to leave it to the end, and that's fair enough, but I don't mind, because of my accent sometimes kicks in, people literally can't understand me, and that's cool. So just say, could you say that again a little bit slower? Thank you very much. So I'll kind of kick off now. We kind of, I, I kind of approached uh, the problem that they had, which wasn't a problem, it was just a brief saying, come and help us use social and digital technology to promote and make people more aware that we've got Andy Warhol exhibition, or the Warhol Immortal exhibition. Start in June, ends August, three month run. That was my brief. So I came in and I kind of had a little look at that and I said, can I rejig it? And they were wonderful enough to think about this. So this was kind of my opening slide back to them, if you like, and obviously, you know what that means. Uh, it's a sandwich with an interrobang. If you don't know what an interrobang is, actually an actual punctuation is fantastic. Look it up. And it was a statement as well as a question. And I wanted them, th them to think a little bit different about approaching social media. Because most of the social media activities and projects and plans out there focus on the meat in the sandwich, which is the social media bit. And I said, actually, the meat in the sandwich is crap if you've got rubbish bread. And... Yeah, crap lettuce and horrible cheese and hard stale cheese. So I kind of want to think uh, a, a little bit round. And actually the meat in the sandwich is not important um, in terms of the social media stuff. Social media stuff is the wrapping around. The experience is the meat in the sandwich. We want to make people smile and people feel delighted and astonished and have emotional kind of responses to the stuff that we get them involved with. And that's the middle bit. And we'll just use social media to both celebrate and reward that bit okay so it's not we do everything online because real life still has more bandwidth okay and we want to get experiential stuff that makes people delight so that was my approach and fair play they listened and i came up with six different ideas to them and i pitched back and they chose three which is odd if you've ever done any pitching usually they just choose one okay so i'm not picking myself up it was just lovely but it was also oh man i gotta do three which is great. So these are the three ones that we'll get to in a minute. The other thing I just want to touch on in terms of the model was important to have some metrics. But the metrics for me wasn't the important bit. But the metrics we can already look at. This is an infographic. If you don't know what an infographic is, you kind of will in a minute. This is an infographic. This is just all um, data made visual. So I've already done this for them. This is the opening weekend. It's scrolling a little bit too fast because it's for an internal use, but I've been had permission to share it in a sense. You can see that I've talked about it was trending, this Warhol to Papa thing, uh, how many tweets we got out uh, with the most influential, stuff like that, and right at the bottom, the stuff that make you feel good. Because that's the beauty with this social media stuff is that you can see it live from the people if you like and see the responses you had. And I'm sure if you fed that back to the creators there, they feel a little bit warm inside. Whereas before, it's kind of you have to ask them in questionnaires. Now it's all live. It's wonderful, this stuff. So that was the model and the approach that we took here. So now I'm going to get to the juicy stuff, the, the ideas, the, the stuff that you came for, that you can steal and run away with. Of course, definitely remix it, remash it up. So one of the ideas uh, that I approached, because remember there were six, but uh, this is a cool idea, was to approach the partner and say, let's take it outside okay, the Warhol Immortal is going to be in to Papa, but let's try to extend that experience outside the walls. And what war would Warhol love? So that was the kind of pitch back. So let's leave it. So we went, um, well, I went and had a little thought about this, and I thought, well, photos is really cool, and photo booths are really cool. And if you can mash up some kind of way of taking a photo booth, an old school photo booth, and then come up with something like this where people could walk away and on the back of it would be the Warhol exhibition information, wouldn't that be cool? I didn't know how by that time, all right? It was just like, wouldn't that be a cool idea? Which is what you do a lot of. Um, and then the great guys at Kato, or Kano, or Kano, yeah, Kato, I think, um, came up with lots of kind of visioning around what it would look like. So they actually situated it, which is great. 
great because then we can kind of see the idea and where it would be and what it would look like. So now we had the big problem of how to do this. And uh, Dion just sat right there, stick your hand up, Dion, just so everybody will know you. Go and have a word with him later. From the amazing fo traveling photo booth, we approached him. Uh, and the really weird story with this is I phoned Dion up and we had never met before. And I'd seen an installation somewhere, I think, at a party. And I phoned him up, and the first thing he said, I said, hi, I'm DK, I'm working with Tapapa. He said, you want me to do a photo booth, don't you? <laughs> and I thought, shit, this guy's good. Um, but I thought he was the devil as well, a little bit. I just got scared, but he was cool. It, just because that's what he was thinking. He was already seeing, like, the Warhol model. Wouldn't it be great? So it was wonderful. And I thought, yeah, we need to work together. So literally, we commissioned him to build, build it. Never done anything like this before, which is kind of really cool. And they extended this in terms of they've even got some great people on it to man it. And you can see kind of they, uh, they dressed up for it. And this is the opening night, huge engagement on the opening night. I don't think they, they stopped. It was just incredible, the amount of people going through. And you can actually see what it looks like. It's really good. We've even taken it out, or Dion and his, and his guys have taken it out to the streets, top of Cuba, already up there. Um, and the way it works is do you go and have your photo taken, you come out, the guys outside got some tablets, and they say, would you like this emailed to you as well? Because you will get a physical photo. This is what you actually get, a physical photo of what you just went in it, with, again, the event information on it. It's just tangible. It's cool. You can take it away. But the email side of stuff is really important. Uh, and Dion, really cool that he shared this little next graphic with us. Uh, this is just the recent, the last four installations. And, of course, you can see, well, not doing that good in terms of permission, but actually the last one, because we're getting better at it, because we're educating and understanding semantically how to turn people on to the idea that we're going to share this across Facebook and, and Twitter and celebrate you, not just here, but to, to our communities. It's kind of really cool. You can see it's kind of growing. And across the board, probably done nearly a 1,000 people, uh, and... And we're trying to spread that message. And if you are interested, this is the, 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 yeah, the itinerary. Okay, so that's where it's going to be, the bottom two, and actually up in uh, Auckland. So we're going to Vodacom HQ, and we're going, obviously, to Mount Smart Stadium as well. I say we, they. It should be. It's definitely they. Um, and you can see that's where, hopefully, it will be for you guys to have a go if you haven't yet. Hopefully, you'll be going to one of these places. By the way, if you follow Tapapa on Twitter and Facebook, they'll be shouting about it as well because you'll see at the top there, we've actually integrated it after every session that they, these guys go out and take all those photos, chuck into a Dropbox, which gets shared with Tapapa, and then that could be uh, published out through Facebook and Twitter, again, to celebrate and reward that participation from the people who took part. Okay, so you're extending it even further. So that's the first one, okay? The second one was the real big one, the challenging one. This was the original slide that I took to Tapapa. I said, I want to go on your roof, and I want to do something at the bottom there, because that's a big forecourt. I don't know what, but I come up with this stupid idea. What if we get a lot of people together, and they all wore beanies, and they created a Warhol-esque image? And I was straight away poo-pooed. I said, okay, what about like uh, sombreros? And what if they, okay, that's rubbish again. Hold up cards. Yes, we're getting somewhere now. What if we could do that? And then we could chuck it up on YouTube straight away. So there was a lot of it, uh, iteration with that idea, but we all kind of was invested in it. It was kind of very Warhol-esque. Everybody's famous for 50 minutes. I wouldn't create a crowd and create something with them. Okay, so we come up with two personalities um, that were obvious that we could tap into and got permission to use them. And we commissioned a local designer to come up with a, a 10 by 10 image and cut it all up so there'd be 100 squares. So we needed 100 people to hold the placards up, hence making the image. So this was the first image we had back when we laid it out. So that was a, an interesting moment when we laid it all out and we saw the size of it. It was 5.5 meters um, squared in terms of, if you know how big that is, just big. All right. Um, and it was great to think then, okay, how do we make this work? So the next image, you'll see next couple of images. This is Jonathan Kelso. I don't think he's here, but he's one of the audience engagement guys to Papa. Uh, Right-hand man on this, so, so big ups to him. But we basically sat, well, not sat, we also kind of got involved and started to lay this out when we got the second one together. And you can see it kind of coming together. This is Alison Mao. Mo, something. That's cool. Uh, and it was real cool to see this starting to happen. But then we had to figure out how to make this work. I had a loose idea. By the way, I'd never done anything 
like this before and bless the papa for like having that trust and going, you know what, let's have a go. You know, this is all about creativity. It's all about trying and experimentation. So what we did was on the back, sellotape the instructions because we thought if people hold up the club cards, they're going to be looking up anyway. They'll have the instructions on the back. Kind of genius, well, we thought so at the time. And um, the next slide is my favorite slide of the whole slide deck because this is the first rehearsal, okay, of just a little bit with about 20 of the, the Papa staff before it opened uh, at Arpa States one morning. We went in and, and it was only a couple of days actually before, even the day before we did this. So this is what it's like in rehearsal. <laughs> and we thought, we got some work to do, yeah? Uh, that's awful. So, but we couldn't work out why. And we worked out some of it had to do with me in terms of I'm up on, on the kind of tier. This was inside, as you can see. We kind of thought we'll do it inside because outside you never know what's going to happen at June, you know, with the weather here. Um, so we thought we'd do it inside and we've got that lovely thing uh, in the middle of Tapapa where you can kind of look down as well. So I was going to be on the balcony, which is where I took that shot, shouting instructions. But we thought we didn't have to do that. All the instructions were on the back. So we learned a lot from that process and realized actually the instructions are really important and we have to walk people through them. But we couldn't work out why that still didn't work because some of them you can see were kind of in the right place, but they're not, right? So we looked at the instructions and um, if you think about it, that's what we're after. And we thought, what if we do this? Now, the fun thing here, I don't know if you've got a maths brain. I certainly don't, and this illustrates it. What we, what we did, we laid this out on the ground. We thought, well, that's number one at the top, number 100 at the bottom. Think about it. Focus on the number one, okay? Because when you flip it, the number one top left-hand side, now it's on the top right. We didn't work that out. <laughs> oh, my God, that was fun. So what we should have put up was this. You know, one goes over there, hundreds now down there, you know, because we flipped it. Of course we flipped it. I worked that out um, with the help of Karen Mason, who was here, who was awesome, um, literally the night before. So now I had to go back. This was the first stack I had to do. That evening I did 100. Then I went home and, and, and threw up a little bit in my mouth and thought, this is great. But then the following morning, literally, of the, of the event, I went back in and did the other 100. Because remember, we got two going on there. Um, but wow, wasn't that a huge thing about learning? And how we promote this, by the way, we did a digital flyer. This is something I just threw together um, very quickly and thought, yeah, let's promote that out. And they put it up on Facebook and Twitter as a digital flyer. We also incentivized participation. If you come and take part, we will give you a two for one voucher as a thank you. Um, so, so we shouted about that as well. So this is kind of, if you like, the Flyer in situ, and um, Tapap is one of the cool kids on the block, got a lot of followers, so when they throw stuff up there, they get kind of this amount of people sharing it, and we're all after the shares rather than the likes, if you know what social media is about. Um, so I'm going to show you the, the time lapse of the final thing, and then I'll talk a little bit afterwards. So this is the time lapse, not the whole video that we did and produced from it, but just the little bit time lapse uh, from a couple of lo local videographers. I'll talk over the top because we, we run it twice. You can see we didn't just leave it once, we run it twice. We learned from before, we got them to kind of stand in general places. Um, so you can kind of then we dispersed them, got together. And that was the two very fast. Okay. One of the, the, the problems in inverted columns, uh, co commas or challenges was that we didn't perceive about height. Just didn't even consider height. So in the middle of uh, so, uh, Peter Jackson, we had a couple of kids, which were fantastic. They were, must have been about seven, bless them, you know. And they were holding up as far as high as they could, these things. But if you looked at it, Peter Jackson didn't have a nose because they were too low. And that was like a real problem for us. Cause we were, and, and they were really cool. The audience, oh, sorry, no, the audience, the, the people who were participating were really cool because I had to shout to them to say, could you lower, come down to the kids? And the kids were trying to stretch. And we kind of got there, but we kind of didn't as well. Uh, and there's a fabulous amount of learning in that one, and I'll come back to it in a little bit. But that was the second idea that we, we had a crack at. And the third idea was something half 
that we did. So again, I said, right, if we got people coming into the exhibition, we want to enable them to have a voice externally, but again, to celebrate and reward that. All about celebrating and rewarding people for doing stuff on social media about this stuff. So couldn't we use those windows and project internally but externally? So I've got a lot of educational friends, and one of my best stories that I talk about in educational conferences is a teacher took some white paper and taped it on the inside of his windows, and then turned a projector on and projected to them and just inverted it, and then from the outside, it looks like a screen. And you can show the kids work. I thought, I'm still in that. And now, wouldn't it be good if people were invited in and they knew the hashtag and tweeted on it, and we just projected them out so everybody walking past can see people enjoying themselves inside. Does that make sense? kind of crossing that boundary and barrier. So the idea was really simple, is to get people at when they're inside or go into the event, they become our Twitter advocates, or as we call them, the Twitterati. Okay? We want to get a group of people who get this stuff that we don't have to educate, that just get it and become our ambassadors. So that was the pitch, basically. The Twitterati, how can we... How can we create a Twitter arty? Well, you can look online. You can see who the most popular are. Yeah, Popular kids in the playground. You can see how many followers they got. Great. But we want to cross-reference that with how many times they're replying to stuff because we want them to be conversationals rather than broadcast. Because, again, if you know about social media, that's the really important stuff. And that's what we did. We just cross-referenced. We came up with a list of 50 potential Twitter arties, those cool, cool people online on Twitter. And we invited them via DM. If they weren't following us, obviously we at replied them and said, look, we're to Papa, we'd love you to follow us so we can send you a personalized video invite via DM. Because you probably understand you, if you're not following each other, you can't DM someone. So that was the first bit. Once we got that, me and uh, Sarah, Sarah's the creator of the whole Warhol project. I managed to snag her and just say, look, could you do these things? And she agreed, it was wonderful. So I'm going to show you one of her personalized video invites. Okay, so think about this. We did this 50 times. Okay, so this was one of them. Just to give you an illustration. Hey, Kai. Thanks for following to Papa, and here's the invite we promised you. Hello, my name's Sarah, and I'm the curator of the upcoming Warhol Immortal Exhibition at Papa, which opens on the 1st of June. I'd like to invite you to a special invite-only exhibition opening on the 31st of May at 7 p.m. Please respond by direct message, and I'll see you there. Cool, yeah? Times 50. Because we were inviting a lot of people, because we knew that half of them just couldn't make it, had other plans, didn't want to, wouldn't reply, blah, blah, blah. And we did. We had 25 people turn up, and we invited them to a special VIP VIP thing. So on 31st of May, there was the VIP gala opening of the Warhol exhibition in Tapapa, huge party, lots of dignities and flamethrowing people. It wasn't, but you know, it was a really cool uh, event. And we invited them to come before that one. They could come to that event, plus go and see the, the exhibition before anybody else, just like all the cool kids, yeah? But they also, they come and we'd feed them and give them booze and we'd tell them how much we appreciated them, which we did. They turned up and there was a good group of them. It was more than that, but they're the ones who posed for it. Some of them are here, so it's kind of cool. And we said thank you, first of all. Thank you for responding. Thank you for being open because it's kind of weird having this kind of video invite to come in. And also, uh, and all credit to Karen again, they wanted to build a relationship. I was the idea is to start something here. This is not the end for Tapapa. This was the beginning of something. Uh, because Tapapa is in this mode of flux. It's trying to work out social and what that means for them. I kind of helped, hopefully, with that a little bit. But this was a beginning about cultivating your audience, but deeper on social and through social media. So uh, I, I kind of, again, shout out to Karen, was, who she stood up and said, thank you for coming. But she also said that you are our mentors. You are our mentors, you know, help us to figure out this stuff. Tell us, talk to us, you know. How many people do that as an organization? So, you know, big up for Tapap for doing that. So that was the third and, and my favorite idea, in a sense, just because it was so lo-fi, it was so easy, and in terms of investment you know yeah we put on a few nibbles for these guys but it went a lot compared to the other ones um but i think it will be a lot of return not to say the others won't but i just really like it that anybody can use that idea in terms of their their uh, organization especially public sector and stuff 
So the final thing I want to talk about today um, is what we learned, you know, because it's a bit geeky, all this stuff, or can be perceived as, and we can get a little bit nerdy up here and, and jump around and say how great social media is, but but also as a, a, an external practitioner going into an organization, you have to be really sensitive. And there's a lot of learning for me again in this. Like I've been, do this is my eighth year of doing social media stuff, you know? Uh, I was doing it before it was social media because it was new media, if you remember back then. New media morphed into social. And I've worked with a hell of a lot of organizations. And it was a great reminder for me just to be sensitive that when you go into an organization, and even if you've got the best ideas, it doesn't matter because they already got a work plan. Those individuals got a work plan. And you're asking them to do something else. Yeah? So for any social media kind of freelancers, you know, that is a big learning. Or even new people who now have social media as part of their profile or portfolio or job, that you know you're going to go back and ask people to do more. And you just got to be sensitive or just got to frame it better, okay? And think about value added for them. What are they going to get out of it? And we had a lot of those types of conversations internally, which is really good to have, by the way. It's good to be challenged and have some pushback. For me, I want to quote uh, an awesome dude. His name's just the best name on the planet, Duke Stump. That's his name. I wouldn't make that up. But he's on at Escurata. Uh, and that's him there talking uh, on uh, do lectures, talking about, you know, bonfire brands. But in that, in that talk, he talks, uh, and I got my favorite quotes from him here, is we got to quieten our cleverness. Yeah? Because I think social media nowadays can be used far and beyond what we used to be able to do, right? It's amazing. But those three projects were very simple, uh, very human, very focused on the, the actual you know, and the actual experience, and we wanted to celebrate people rather than numbers or things. Yeah, we really try to go for the personal. Uh, and you can learn a lot from this dude, and please go and check out that video or just tweet him now saying, hey, DK is shouting about you. He's a, he's a good lad. He used to be the brand manager for Nike, so he knows what he's talking about, okay? And I just really love the last bit there, our rethink, reframe, redesign. I think we should be getting social now. I, I don't think it's a question of, isn't social media cool? Done. We've had that debate. Okay. Um, the next bit is, how can we rethink about it? How can we reposition it? How can we have some fun? How can we mash it up with existing stuff? Um, and just reframe it like, like that guy that says, or redesign. It's really cool.